so when I learned about it, I was uh, I was in Paris. Uh, I was in uh, in the street. Somebody called me and said, "Did you see the news?" Um, at the beginning, uh, you know, uh, it was not yet signed the default prosecution agreement. When I heard that there will be a default prosecution agreement signed, uh, so I was uh, very much surprised. I was still a little bit more worried because nothing is done until it's done. Uh, so uh, I waited until uh, in, until it's done to uh, download from the internet uh, the uh, default prosecution agreement to see it from my own eyes because I could not believe uh, that it, it, this uh, was happening. Uh, so for me, it was a big, big surprise. And when you see uh, uh, the uh, agreement, uh, it's a, it's kind of unique uh, agreement. It's a really uh, a very special uh, deal that has been uh, made here. Because uh, usually when uh, uh, an individual is um, basically uh, under investigation or even indicted by the United States, like it was the case here, um, the prosecution from the Department of Justice do not offer the alternative to sign a different prosecution agreement with the, uh, the person who has been uh, indicted. It's either uh, the person goes to trial and maybe win, maybe lose at trial, or they make uh, the person sign a plea agreement where basically you plead guilty. So mm -hmm. here it's very unusual that they offer to uh, a physical person to sign not a plea agreement, but a different prosecution agreement where the person does not have to plead guilty. In fact, this kind of different prosecution agreement usually is used for companies, not for individuals. Of course, it's an excellent result for, for, for Mrs. Meng, okay? Because uh, in this kind of default prosecution agreement, you admit to some facts, so which is what you, you just said, but at the same time, you know, uh, the, uh, the person and the prosecutor agree that the person did not commit any federal, state, or local crime. <music> Clear that the US has been using for quite a long time uh, their extraterritorial reach to target a specific company in specific sector, uh, which has most of the time strategic sector. You know, they started with Toshiba in the 80s and 90s, uh, then Alstom, then, then Huawei, and so on. So here you, you, you see a similarity of, uh, of uh, cases where you have the US uh, jurisdiction being applied to foreign companies in order to achieve an, uh, an economic uh, goal. So, um, in uh, the difference between, of course, obviously, my case and the, the case of Mrs. Meng is that uh, I was arrested while I was in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, therefore, I, I didn't uh, have the chance to, to really fight back before I was incarcerated. So, so of course, the fact that she was arrested in Canada uh, made a, 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 huge, uh, a huge difference. And the other huge difference is that she had the full support of the company, of Huawei. She had the full support of the Chinese government, uh, who understood very rapidly that this was not a, a legal case uh, as usual. It was a very uh, specific uh, legal case. And uh, then I think the Chinese government and Huawei understood very rapidly that this was part of an economic war. So I think uh, the case of Huawei is going to hopefully uh, start to slow down the United States. At least it's the first time where you have a, a, a country which really stands up uh, in order to uh, keep uh, some of its uh, people, citizens, you know, away from US uh, jail and to, and it's the first time that really the, com the, the country protects in such a way the company. Maybe it's not going to stop the United States, but at least uh, it's, a, it's a victory. I don't know, but uh, uh, <clears throat> what there may be some uh, less high profile people, you know, who could be uh, prosecuted, uh, uh, obviously, for uh, because uh, Huawei is not the only company who has been targeted, you know. So, uh, the, uh, so every year you have new companies, uh, maybe smaller ones, uh, you know, with less uh, high profile cases, which are. Uh, under the, the, the scrutiny or indicted uh, or, uh, or have to face this kind of, of problem. Uh, so this is not going to, uh, to stop. What could uh, st stop this, at least minimize it, is if uh, the country puts in place the, 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 the laws 
and treat the, the cases inside your, your own country. So, like we have done in France, now we are treating the case of uh, Airbus and Société Générale in France. Uh, and I'm sure uh, if, uh, if China is implementing uh, its own law, they will treat the case, those cases in, in China. Uh, and uh, therefore, this, those companies will not be subject to, to the US uh, uh, jurisdiction, or at least you know, if it's treated in China, you know, this is going to be a different uh, case. But now, uh, US and China, you know, uh, are at economic war. Like US was at war with Japan in the 80s and 90s. Like US was at war with uh, Europe and so on. So um, uh, one of the uh, uh, issues with the United States is that if you don't show that you are strong, uh, they will not consider consider you uh, uh, in a positive way. And uh, therefore, uh, they will uh, continue to do what they uh, have been doing uh, since uh, since quite a lot of time. So uh, only if you take take a strong me measure and sometimes retaliation measures. For instance, you know uh, they find some of some companies, and then you need to find to find also companies, uh, U.S. companies. Only when you have this kind of uh, retaliation, then they start to to sometimes back off. Uh, so in fact, Europe was it before China, you know, uh, by this uh, extraterritoriality of uh, the, the US uh, law, both on, uh, on sanction embargoes, export control, and on, on, uh, on uh, corruption uh, cases. So uh, in fact, what you see in China uh, could be only the beginning of the programs, you know, uh, because uh, the United States, for instance, have enacted a decree in, uh, uh, in uh, on November 1st, to, uh, 2018, stating that uh, uh, FBI agent now needs to focus on Chinese company mm. competing against American company for infringement of the Foreign Corrupt Practice Act. So, uh, so you could expect more cases against a Chinese company. Uh, very pragmatic, you know, there are uh, uh, the problem is not them, you know. You know, they are they are, they are the superpower. They are defending their interests and they are using all the means to defend uh, their interests. Okay, they're not going to change. You know, whether it's Democrats or Republicans and so on, you you see there's a big continuity on on on, on this side. So um, and they're always going to fight for the economic of, uh, interests of the United States. Mm -hmm.